This is Dan again from Homes at Center Hill Lake TN and we're back again with segment number two of building with structural insulated panels, SIP panels. And again we have uh, Chris Donatelli from Donatelli Builders in Chicago and Josh from Eco Panels in Red Boiling Springs discussing the assembly of the panels and I think you're going to really find this interesting. So what I'm looking at here is a completed panel that's ready to be shipped out and you can see the detailing of the foam and I did watch some videos before I came. I, I do know that this gets sealed with expandable foam, closed cell foam that matches uh, chemically with, with uh, the foam that's in here. But we also have these cams that go in and that actually locks the panels together. So let's go into one of the areas where you can show me how that looks when they come together and how to fasten them. So this is your little mock-up of a space that would typically look how a space is going to look after panels are set on a job site. So yep. you're going to have OSB on the interior and is that always going to be the interior? Typically it's always going to be. So part of a structural panel is you have to have two pieces of OSB, interior, exterior. Yep. And I gotta assume that drywallers are probably your best friends because you cannot miss. No, they don't have to worry about hitting a stud, right? So, <laughs> so they put some glue on their drywall, and you know that it's funny to watch them because they're 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 programmed and and they do their same pattern, right? Right. But they really don't have to worry about whether they hit that stud or not. Got it. And this, mm -hmm. um, I have some questions about how much framing exists in this. So why don't I ask you that? Yeah. How much framing is actually in these panels? How much wood framing is in here? So if, if we're looking at just say this wall right here, there is a base plate at the bottom, a two by four. That's it's sealed with foam during the installation? Sealed with foam. A lot of people will, they'll actually uh, run a bead of foam or a bead of caulk. Some will even use seal seal between that base plate and the subfloor. Get a good seal there. Then they'll put foam on top of that base plate before our panel goes down on top of it. Okay. Get a really good connection. So that two is there, and then you've got one that runs across the top of your panels. Got it. And this is this is a gable end, obviously, which is which is a little bit different. Kind of a representation. But um, this here, I see these holes, yep. and it looks like that's to access your cam. It is. So rather than having two by fours that are joining these panels together you and i've talked about the, the thermal bridging and, and how that works okay yeah. yes so what we've done is we've embedded cam locks into each of these panels so embedded into this panel is a cam lock that's got a hook embedded into this panel is a cam lock that basically has just has a little striker right and so we take this we do this um just here we drill these holes out we make sure that that they work and we'll pull this over and you can see this camera probably won't be able to see this but that panel wow. actually pulls together right so before there's what a good uh, eighth of an inch maybe can, can you get it up close to that and so so hopefully you can see this detail here and how this is going to draw up move the camera over so you can get a better view i can see it really clearly but hopefully yeah. they can see now so your guys out on the on the job site they're going to get this pushed up you know as tight as they can get it right mm -hmm. but as you're fastening with these cam locks it does have that action it reaches out grabs and pulls tight so if you watch this gap here you can see how that happens it grabs and then it pulls together and really tightens that whole thing up. So you have one of these cams every two foot, every two foot, as you go up a, a wall. So in an eight, nine foot wall, which is pretty typical, then you're going to have four cam locks in that. Got and it. In a ten foot wall, you're going to have five. And the R value, because there's no framing in here, like you mentioned, the mm -hmm. R values consistent all the way across even, really even in the corners really even in the corners you'll have a little bit of framing in the corners but they're not they're not connected to the outside so the bridge is broken so the bridge is broken got it so you don't have a thermal bridge it's there to so if so if we have to put cabinets up or something like that we could say hey we've got a row of cabinets and and you could probably put some fastening on this side yes. which reduces a little bit of the insulation but you're still far over minimum cold standards. Sometimes you may need to strap to your subfloor on the exterior and you've got a piece of rock in there to go into if you need. Got it. Yeah. So how about the inevitable things that happen in the field like 
a wall like this, we're going in between two spans, you know, we have a foundation, we have a deck, we snap the lines. What happens if these panels grow slightly mm -hmm. as we get over to this corner? That's a very good question because we would prefer them to grow a little bit than not be long enough, right? Yeah. So you can they, always... They don't, they don't sell this at home, people. You, you can cut a board, but you can't stretch it, right? Okay. <laughs> makes, so, makes sense. So... Typically, you know, we just saw this cam pull this in together, right? Okay. But you and I know there's there's still a 30 second there. Okay. And it's pretty typical for there to be a, a 16th at least between every connection. Sure. And if you've got a 50 foot wall and you're doing this every four foot, that starts to add up. So let's say you get to the end of a wall and you've got a... Which would be the corner, correct? Which is a corner. Okay. Yeah. So as we run, we're going to have what? We call it a cheater panel. Cheater panel. Right, a little cheater, right? So okay. you got to bring everything back in line. So let's say this is running a half inch long. Okay. okay. You can take this panel, cut it back a half inch, and they got a half inch of foam. And then we have a method that is more similar to um, how other SIP panel companies connect every one of their joints. But we have a... With framing. With yeah, that, but we'll do it with a skinnier sit panel. Got it. So you st still don't have a point of thermal bridging. You'll slide that skinnier sit panel into this, and that gives you an anchor point in your anchor, anchor everything down here. So this point doesn't have a cam lock because you're using that cheater kind of connection. So we start by putting this corner in place. We put this corner in place. We lay them out. We tighten them up as much as we possibly can. In this situation, which is probably going to happen, where we, we grow three-eighths of an inch, half-inch on a real long wall, mm -hmm. we just cut that down. You provide the items that we need to make this connection. Yes. And then this would be the only one that doesn't have the cam. Yes. Yeah. But you'll have one of these generally in every wall. So every time you go to turn a corner, you're going to have one of these connections. Yep. Okay. That way, you can, that way you can adjust. I mean, as a builder, you know, you run into situations where subfloors are off a little bit, you're a little out one sure. way or the other. Uh, one of the greatest things about our products is that it's pre-manufactured and built to spec. One of the worst things that can be about our product sometimes is that it's built to spec, right? Yes. And so when you're, when you're making a product like this, you have to add in some level of flexibility because right. you're always going to run into the unexpected out of the job okay. site you've got to be able to adapt. And this is what that allows you to, yeah. to do. You have an, a, a point to adapt at the end of every wall in that house. Yeah. I might recommend you change the phrase from a cheater panel to some positive engineering. <laughs> That's right, yeah, probably should. <laughs> Okay, we've reached the end of segment number two on how they uh, do the assembly on the panels. And again, we want to thank Josh Beasley of Eco Panels and also Chris Donatelli of Donatelli Builders in Chicago. Segment number three is going to be about uh, installing the electrical uh, infrastructure into these panels prior to the panels being built. And so uh, we'll move on to that next and you'll get to see how it's done. And thank you.